I've never seen so many spiders want to make friends with me all at once. They pounced on me like a seagull descending upon a hot chip. It was a fantastic moment. Hearing your voice again. Some riders just make it look easy. Riders like Christoph Hollegaard in the 2014 transcontinental race. The one who went so fast that at times it looked like he was going to beat not only the other contenders but also the race cars. The one who stopped for a snooze on the first night, slipped into sixth place and then calmly and methodically reeled in his rivals. The one who made what for most riders would have been the disastrous mistake of taking the ferry across the narrow, very straight on the mouth of the Bay of Kota, realised his error only after climbing the Lovesome Pass and backtracked to avoid disqualification, circling the entire bay before reascending the pass with an extra 5 hours and 1,000 metres of climbing in his legs. The one who posted a nonchalant tweet 1,000 kilometres from the finish saying he was looking forward to eating his breakfast with a view of the Bosphorus. For those who spent the first half of August obsessively following the Transcontinentals, online tracking page, Allegart seemed unstoppable, and indeed, this is one of the secrets behind his phenomenal performance. What John Stevenson calls the simple but devastating tactic of not stopping. Ibbett's overall average speed was actually slightly higher than Allegart's, but the Belgian was moving for all but 9 hours and 38 minutes of his 8 day race, though whether he qualified as awake by the final stage is anyone's guess. It's easier to keep going, he explained to a Flemish news crew, than it is to rest and then have to leave again. The third transcontinental race in the summer of 2015 was set to be longer, harder and more unforgiving than the first two. Many will fail, predicted race director Mike Hall, with what sounded suspiciously like relish, and many more would become addicted to following the race online, compulsively checking the tracker map and eagerly scanning the start list in the months running up to the event to see who had signed up, who was back for more, who had finally put their money where their mouth was, who was in, who was out. So many were disappointed when Allegar announced shortly before the start race that he would instead be competing in the formidable Red Bull Trans-Siberian Extreme. The race covered 9,200 kilometres between Moscow and Vladivostok, including 58,000 metres of climbing, passing through four climate zones and seven time zones. It was divided into stages that varied in size from an eye-watering 300 kilometres to a frankly mind-boggling 1,400 kilometres. Only a maniac would consider entering such a torture chamber. A maniac, or perhaps a certain mild-mannered secondary school teacher from Belgium. As predicted by all but himself, Allegat won the race in 318 hours, 57 minutes and 30 seconds. More than half a day ahead of the closest rival, having at one point given up sleeping in order to maintain the gap. Okay, so it's 20 to 10 on Wednesday the 22nd, and we're catching back up with the main field. So as we know, Christoph is still in the lead. He's covered 2,224 kilometres, closely followed though by Mike Hall. Mike Hall is on his heels, 2,186 kilometres. So he's only 36 kilometres behind now. Um, and it's just going to be one of those really kind of attritious battles, I guess. It's about who can sleep the least. Um, not even about who can pe pedal the fastest, because as we know, you can, you can, you can conserve a little of energy, pedal slower. But if you sleep less, you know that's that's ninety minutes saved out on the bike. In third place, we've got Sarah Hammond, two thousand and five kilometers. She's doing so so well. And again, you know, um, just because Christoph's 200 kilometers ahead doesn't mean anything. Anything could happen, you know. He could have a mechanical, you know, Sarah could undersleep him, you know. If she undersleeps Christoph, then she's going to catch him up, and there's still a long, long way to go. So, yeah, anything can happen. Anything. So then we've got Seth. We've skipped Kim, but I couldn't see him on the on the map. Um, so we've got Seth. We've got Michael, Michael Lake. Let's skip on down the fields. Um, 
I don't know why he's showing in faded. What what does that mean? Does it mean he's off his bike and he's not travelling? Is he resting? Because that happened to some of the other riders and um, it, it, uh, they, they reappeared again, you know? They reappear, get, reappeared again, so I don't quite know what that means. Okay, another Brit, Mr. Sheldrake. There he is, just popped up. Doing very well, 1,544 kilometers in. Next Brit on the road is Frank Prow, not too far behind. Joe Donnelly, one of the younger riders, younger riders in the race. 23, I think Joe Donnelly is. Doing absolutely amazing, just ahead of James Rayson there. Do you see that? Joe Donnelly ahead of, ahead of James Rayson. Rhino, slipping back a little bit, but that could just be kind of their sleep sinks, you know. Um, if he's kind of slept earlier in the day and now they're catching him back up, there's no reason why he won't leapfrog them again when they, when they in turn sleep. Dan Welsh, remember this guy, we thought he was left back in Perth, but he wasn't. I don't know whether it was a transponder issue, but he's doing really, really well. He seems to be um, picking up some pace 1,200 kilometres in. He's gone past Maven. Then Leo, our Leo. I think Leo is the youngest rider, 20, and Joe before was 23, but he's doing absolutely amazingly, and he appears to be um, cycling along with Cycle Maven there. But then uh, what about this Juju? What has happened to Juju? You know, she was so far ahead of the field yesterday. Um, she was in contention one of those kind of top 10, top 15 spots, and now she's just blown out the back of the pack completely. Um, Cycling Maven was nowhere near it yesterday, and now he's overtaken her. Um, I hope she's okay. I hope she's doing well. If you know what's up with Juju, because I tried looking on Facebook before, and there's no updates, um, nothing on Instagram. There's no other posts on YouTube right now. So if you know what's happened to Juju, um, please let us know and we wish her the best of luck. Okay, that's today done then. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to subscribe for more IndiePack adventures, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.